Hi, I'm hydrated and I'm making my gear. Welcome back to the S3-1200 Sampler Series. I'm happy you're here. I really am. Today we are going to jump into KeyCAD. KeyCAD is an open source piece of software that allows you to draw schematics and design PCBs or printed circuit boards. So in the video, we're going to talk about the installation of the software. We're going to talk about sort of the step-by-step -step process of drawing a schematic. Then we're going to jump into the PCB design part of it, do our PCB layout, and then we're going to send them off for PCB manufacturing. That brings us to the sponsor of this video series. PCBWay. PCBWay allows you to do all kinds of really cool manufacturing, whether it's printed circuit boards, CNC, 3D printing, anything you need for your project. PCBWay provides high quality products for their customers. I encourage you to check them out. Later on in the video, we're actually going to be using their KeyCAD plugin to place our order for our power supply PCB. So stay tuned for that. Without any further ado, let's get going and do some KeyCAD. Okay, if you don't have KeyCAD installed on your computer, open your web browser, go to keycad.org slash download, pick your operating system, and select a repository. I'm gonna just pick North America. After the download completes, all you have to do is launch the installer and follow the on-screen instructions. All right, let's open up KeyCAD. When you first boot up KeyCAD, the first thing you're gonna see is the project browser. On the right-hand side here is all the stuff you can use to create schematics and PCBs. On the left-hand side is the project files that are currently open. We're gonna create a new project for our power supply. So we're gonna go File, New Project, and I'm gonna put it in my KeyCAD folder, and I am going to call it S3 power supply demo click save and as you can see keycat has already created a dot schematic file which is where we'll create our schematic and a dot pcb file which is the file where we'll create our pcb okay let's open up the schematic file all right cool so we've opened the schematic file this big area in the center here is where we're going to actually create the schematic. Let's start off by placing some components. On the far right hand side of the screen, you have a toolbar of stuff. All this stuff you can use to create a circuit. The one that's most commonly used is the place symbols. The icon for it looks like a little op amp. And this opens up a huge library of pre-made schematic symbols that is included in KeyCAD. So the first thing that we need is a barrel jack for power. Click in the search bar up here and start typing. And that's our barrel jack that we'll use. So this is perfect for us because it's got two connections. It's got a middle pin connector and a sleeve connection. So this is great. Click OK. As you can see, the barrel jack is attached to my cursor, so I can click anywhere and place it on the schematic sheet. Now press escape. Let's zoom in. Okay. Now what we need to do is assign a footprint to this barrel jack. Double click the barrel jack. And what you get is a symbol properties dialog box. You can change any of this information here to your liking. We'll be changing the value a lot in the future when we're placing other components. But for now, we're gonna focus on the footprint dialog box. See this little icon that pops up on the right hand side here? Click that. And what you get is a footprint chooser. This is all the pre-made PCB footprints for all the different kinds of components that exist. These are pre-loaded, pre-made in KeyCAD. You can make your own. That'll be something we look at later. But for now, we're just gonna use stock PCB footprints. So the idea here is that we wanna pick the appropriate PCB footprint to match the component that we're actually placing. Now the PCB footprint for the barrel jack is going to be a little bit different because we're going to panel mount the barrel jack on our final sampler. So what we're gonna do is actually run two wires from the barrel jack to the power PCB. We just need something with two connectors. From experience, I know that I can use pin header connectors. Click in the search bar and we'll type connector pin header 
we want 2.54 millimeters. We get all these different pin headers and we want one by two. So here's a one by two pin header. The pin spacing is 2.5 millimeters and it's horizontal. So looking at this, this cream colored stuff here is the ink that's actually gonna be printed on the PCB. This purple line here is the mechanical size of the actual component. And this little red box here and this little red circle, these are the actual solderable pads and drill hole associated with the connections on the barrel jack. What this means is that connection one will be soldered to here and connection two will be soldered to here. So we don't really need a horizontal pin header. We need a vertical pin header. And yeah, that'll work great. Click OK. It's assigned this footprint to the barrel jack. Click OK again. And now when we update our PCB document, the barrel jack will have that PCB footprint associated with it. Okay, let's place another component. I'm going to open up the bill of materials for the power supply. This document is uploaded to my Patreon. So if you want access to the bill of materials, sign up for the Patreon and you'll have access to this database. The next part we're going to place is the diodes. So let's click on the DigiKey link here. It's a 1N5392 diode. Back to KeyCAD, let's place symbols and let's do a search for 1N53. There is a 1N53XXB. Now this is a Zener diode and the package is DO201. Let's go back to the DigiKey page. Looking right here, we see that the package is a DO204AL or a DO41. So those packages aren't exactly the same. So let's go back and look for a different diode. We'll look for the 4004, since that's what we're going to be using on our 5 volt regulator. And this one, yep, this is perfect. So this is a general purpose rectifier diode, a DO41. And the great thing is it already has a PCB footprint assigned to it. So let's click OK and we'll place it right here. Now press escape, double click the component. We're gonna leave D1 as our reference, but we're gonna change the value. So this is our actual part number associated with this diode symbol now. Right click the diode, go to transform selection and mirror horizontally. Now our diode is the correct orientation for our circuit. Let's connect a wire. Over on the right hand side, you see this little wire here. It says draw wires. Click it and you get this little wire looking thing on your cursor. Click on connection one of the barrel jack and drag with your mouse and then click on the anode of the diode and the connection is complete. Press escape and you're good to go. So uh, yeah, this process goes on for quite a while. I'm gonna speed up the video a bit so that it doesn't take so long. But if you're interested in seeing the whole process unfold in a more detailed manner, I suggest you head over to my Patreon. It's got a full length video of this entire process that you can check out. It's free to sign up. Head over there, patreon.com slash making my gear. I'll see you over there. schematic is complete. We are ready to save and we're ready to update the PCB document. Okay, this is what you do. You go tools, update PCB from schematic. Okay, zero errors, update PCB, close it. Okay, as you can see, all the components now are attached to my cursor and I can put them anywhere on this sheet. Looks good. The PCB, when you first load it, has this 
uh, outline here. We can get rid of that because we don't need it. This is an object, so we're going to get rid of the drawing sheet. So you can just hide it by clicking the little eyeball. So the best approach now is kind of taking all the individual components and laying them out in a way that's easy to hook up. So if you zoom into the parts, you can see that it has all these net labels. It's also got these little tiny fine lines. This fine line here, those are called rat nest lines. And basically they're sort of temporary lines that show which components are hooked up together or which ones that should be hooked up together. We're going to kind of just like quickly lay out the board in a way that it's going to be easy to make all of the connections. Go back to our layers and on the silk screen layer, which is all this cream colored stuff, right? We need to put an outline for the heat sink that we're gonna be attaching to each voltage regulator. So let's grab the square and draw that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this box 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters. The cool thing about that is that'll be kind of like the outline of the biggest heat sink we might use in the design. I'm just gonna paste that as our endpoint and add plus 15, and it'll automatically add the appropriate amount to that initial value. So now when I press okay, this is going to be 15 millimeters and we're gonna do the same thing with the Y coordinates. So that'll be the outline that we'll work with. I just wanna make sure that I'm not putting components too close to the voltage regulators. We'll just kind of eyeball it to the center. See how it kind of locks in place? So we're gonna do the same thing over here on this one. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is start drawing traces to connect all these devices, right? Because these rat's nest lines are just like placeholders, just telling us what's being connected to what. Zoom in, click bottom, and it turns the pads blue. So this is what it's gonna look from the underside of the board. So I got my bottom layer selected, press X and click and drag, and it automatically connects that. Okay, now to make it bigger, which is what we want, double click, and the track width, I want pretty beefy, so I wanna go 1.5 millimeters, and that's much better. And the reason why we're doing 1.5 millimeters on this is because we're drawing a lot of current for one thing, and so we want those traces to be a little bit bigger, right? Okay, now we need to connect all of our grounds. We're gonna do a polygon pour on the top layer, and that's gonna connect all of the ground connections on the board. As you click this little tool right here, it looks like a little puzzle piece. Click it, go to the very corner of your design, and maybe about there. So you wanna be a little tiny bit in from the edge, and make sure you're on the top layer. And we click down, it asks which layer you're gonna pick. So we're gonna pick the top layer and we're gonna change the zone properties to ground. Click okay. And then you got this draggy tool. What you're gonna do is draw like a box. 
Okay. And you want to get nearly to the edge. Okay. And you want to draw a box. So super simple. Okay. Go and complete the square. So now, see how it's got this little, these little lines? That's your entire area that it's gonna fill with copper and make the ground connection. So click zone manager and everything looks good there. That's the zone that we're gonna fill. Click refill zones in the bottom left corner. Click okay. And there you go. So now, as you can see, all these ground connections have little connections that are connecting it to the actual copper layer. Now that that's completed, we'll save it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a design rule check. It's gonna tell us whether there are any errors on our board, whether things are overlapping or too close together. We go inspect, we go design rules checker, click it, run DRC. So now we have zero violations. So this board is ready for production. So now that we're done the design, we want to send it off to PCBWay, right? We're going to install the PCBWay plugin for KiCad. So back in our project browser, click plugin and content manager, filter PCBWay, click fabrication plugins, click install, apply pending changes. Operations were successful. Close and back to our PCB. There we go. And now we have a little icon up here that says plugin for PCB way. So click that and it automatically boots up the PCB way website and we've automatically loaded your PCB files, automatically uploads your part list. Everything is all ready to go. And then you just go through and pick your stuff. We're gonna be doing single pieces. Uh, it's one design on this board. Automatically detects the size of the board, which is fantastic. Then you can specify the number of pieces that you want. I pick five. Specify the number of layers for the board, which is two. We're gonna be using FR4 material. The thickness is 1.6, which is great. Minimum track spacing, you can leave at the default. Minimum hole spacing, you can leave at the default. And then you can have some fun if you want and pick a different color solder mask so you can have a cool color board. I'm going classic green for mine. And then yeah, silk screen text, you can say what color you want the text, yellow, black, or white, I pick white and then UV coating if you want it. And yeah, that's about it. Everything looks good. So this is ready to go. We click save to cart, click agree, and off you go. All right, sweet. So we submitted our Gerber files and now what happens is one of their customer service representatives does like a quick engineering check sort of thing and they just make sure that they can actually manufacture the board to your specs. Once that's approved, you get an email, you log back in, you put in your payment information, you put in your shipping information and off you go. It's that simple. It's really that simple, honestly. Just want to say thanks one more time to PCB Way for sponsoring this video series. Honestly, without their support, this project wouldn't be possible. Anyways, so in the next video, we're going to get our board back from PCB Way and we're going to do a little crash course in assembly. So if this is something that interests you, please subscribe to the channel, sign up for the Patreon. For those who have subscribed, I salute you. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.